And out to Tennessee, the brutal attack of a mother of two asleep in her own bed. She's beaten to death with a sledgehammer. Let's go straight out to John Phillips. He is the host with 790 KABC Talk Radio. John, what happened? Well, it's an act of unspeakable brutality where you have a, a single mom whose husband died of Lou Gehrig's disease. She's living in this town in Tennessee, trying to make it, working as a legal assistant. She's got a 16-year-old and a 15-year-old. She goes to bed one night, both kids in the house, everyone is presumably safe. And then the unspeakable happens, where the 15-year-old just snaps. And in a fit of rage, and we, we don't know the details in terms of what caused this kid to snap, he breaks into his mother's bedroom where she's lying sound asleep and plays whack-a-mole with her face and a sledgehammer. Then he goes into the neighboring room, which is a game room, and takes gasoline and liquor and starts a fire in the house, hoping, I guess, to burn the body, burn the, the, uh, the corpse that he left in his mother's bedroom that was formerly his mother and his 16-year-old brother in the bedroom, hoped he would go down in flames. He then takes off and leaves this mess behind him. With us tonight, a really special guest, everybody. It is Major Don Lindsay. He is with the Sumner County Sheriff's Department. He actually interviewed this young man, and we are using his name. He is a minor, but he is being charged as an adult in the murder of his own mother, Zachary Davis. Uh, Major Lindsay, thank you for joining us tonight. Yes, thank you. Can I ask you, what we're hearing is that after he allegedly bludgeoned his mother to death in her bedroom as she lay in her bed asleep. He locked the door behind him. Is that true? Uh, yeah, that is true. All right. Now, where did you locate him? How far away from the home and how long did you take it to find him? Well, we began our search and uh, during our search, it took us approximately three hours, three and a half hours to locate him. Uh, basically, we started pinging his cell phone. And at that point, we were able to locate him, uh, and one of our deputies located him in a neighborhood approximately four to five miles from where this occurred at, so um, located him in that manner. And how did, how did he get four to five miles away? Do you know? Uh, he just walked, uh, started walking. He had uh, packed some stuff and uh, had also stopped by a convenience store and bought a cold drink and uh, wound up locating his phone, which he had... Uh, put in a culvert and uh, uh, he disposed of that phone at that point and then we just continued looking and set up a perimeter and located him inside that perimeter. So you're saying that he actually threw the phone away? Yeah, he had the presence of mind to know that uh, we could track the phone. Um, he later told me he uh, did not know he had the phone on him and located in his back pocket at that point he threw the phone in a, in a culvert to keep us to I'm tracking him that way. And that can be called consciousness of guilt. Now, what happened when you interviewed him? What was his demeanor like? He was very courteous, very uh, polite, um, very just uh, not very emotional, um, and uh, answered 99% uh, of our questions and just uh, pretty matter of fact about everything. Now, you know, we're hearing reports that he actually smiled a little bit as he answered your questions? Yeah, that, it was a small smile. It was a, kind of a small grin at, at one point. Uh, I think one of these techers was trying to get, uh, make him feel a little bit at ease at that point, and he, he gave a little grin. But as far as smiling a whole lot during the interview, he did not do that. Did he seem with it to you? Did he seem that he understood why he was there, uh, understood what you were asking him, able to relate facts back to you? Yes, uh, he's uh, very uh, knowledgeable. He's a uh, very intelligent kid as far as he said he had just read uh, two Stephen King novels and I read them in a day and a half. And uh, he, anything you asked him, he pretty much had to answer for and uh, answered it very intelligible. Randy Lucas is with us. He is defending Zachary Davis right now. And uh, Mr. Lucas, thank you for joining us. I understand that you have publicly said, and we're going to go more into it, but you consider 
your client, Zachary Davis, a victim in this case? Why so? Yes, that's, that's exactly correct. And why is that? Because his mother is dead. He's alive. Yes, but Zach has, uh, has demonstrated um, that he's been very disturbed for a long time. Um, as uh, Major Lindsay told you, he is very courteous, but he has virtually no emotion. He is, his uh, total affect is, is robotic. He speaks in a monotone. Uh, it's been that way for several years, um, and nothing was done to get him any kind of treatment or counseling to deal with the traumas that he suffered, both from the death of his father and from uh, uh, sexual abuse.